Zimmy85 writes, I've been scrapbooking today and I noticed that I have the hardest time picking out what pattern paper to use on my layouts. Do you always match your pattern paper to your pictures? I usually try to match all the colours, but it's driving me crazy trying to match things perfectly, leaving me with a bunch of paper that just isn't right. Glitter Girl, can you help Zimmy85 pick a pack of pattern papers? Of course I can. I think in this case, the best idea is to perhaps look at the photos first, make a few decisions, and then put the photos aside. So I'm going to take you through an example. I have these two photos of a, um, a hike that went a little bit wrong, so there's kind of a story behind these, even though the pictures look quite plain and simple. And if I were to look at this and take the colors immediately from the photo. The obvious color here to use is green and there's also then a bit of brown in the track and then if you were to look at the people then you could start to pick out individual colors of the people in the photos. But in general there's a great deal of green and brown going on and that's why we see a lot of outdoor themed layouts with that green and brown color scheme. It's become quite synonymous for anything outdoors. But if you were to imagine this on a completely green sheet of cardstock, the photos would be lost. There is no contrast there and there's so much green in the picture that perhaps the green on the background is too much. That's also where you're going to run into that example or that problem where if you really like the color to match perfectly it's going to be quite difficult. It's always hard to find a, an exact shade match if you're using paper products because the greens that you have in your collection may not be exactly the greens in the photo. And you could go back and edit the photo to match the paper, that's a possibility. And digital scrapbookers have a little bit of an easier time with this because they can just use the eyedropper tool to change the color of either the photos or their paper to match. But we can't do that with our pattern paper in our, in our paper collection. So in this case, because it would be hard to match the green, and because it would just be a sea of green over the 12 by 12 page, I really want to start with a different color in mind. So I want to go, instead of the obvious color scheme, to look for something that would be complementary but slightly less obvious. And the one thing that all of us have in common in these photos is that we're wearing denim in some way, um, or, or something that's that sort of blue. So we all just happen to have various elements of blue and in this photo particularly the blues are all quite whitewashed from lots of sun in that little patch of the photo. And so what I'm thinking is to take a hint from that blue but I don't want to try and match it exactly because again it's going to be quite difficult and if you look every single blue that's in there is different. So it's going to be tough to try and, and match it perfectly and make that clear in the layout. So instead, what I want to do is take the idea of what does a washed out blue work with. The first thing to keep in mind is that collections don't always have exactly what you might expect. So let's have a look at this collection, which is the Paper Heart collection from Crate Paper. Now, at first glance, this is certainly a Valentine themed collection. There's so much pink, there are lots of hearts, there's quite a bit of red. But if we start to look cl more closely, there is actually quite a bit of versatility in this collection. Yes, there are obvious loved themed and heart themed items here, but there are also some things that are really versatile. So there's a ledger paper that just has a little bit of a lace pattern around the edge. There's a stripe that has no hearts or pink whatsoever. There's this sort of small repeating pattern, which I tend to think of as wallpaper patterns, the sorts of things that just tile well together. And they don't overwhelm the page, but they do add pattern and color to any sort of element that you would use. And the one I really want to pay attention to is this one, which is a gray and off-white sort of twist on a chevron. It's got a, a zigzag pattern, but it's not a line. It's, it's evenly spaced blocks. And when I was imagining that idea of worn denim, gray is a color that really makes up the worn, worn denim look. That, that idea when, when the denim starts to fray enough that you can see the threads, the individual threads are very rarely blue. They tend to be gray underneath as they start to tear. So I also like that this is a small repeating pattern and it's 
got a little bit of distress to it. This is a really good candidate for a background sheet in my in my mind. Well, in my embellishments, I wanted to see what I could do with this new sheet. This is from the Follow Your Heart collection by Rana Farr, and it's by My Mind's Eye. And it has this gray and has picked it up with teal and yellow, which is a really lovely, trendy combination at the moment. I love how those three colors look together. And teal is certainly a color that will work well with blue, and in fact there are shades of blue here in the in um, in the collection. So this is another idea that can help if you get stuck with really really wanting to put the photo next to the cardstock or next to the pattern paper and match it as you go. Pick one pattern paper, pick one embellishment and work from there without your photos to hand. So I know that these two are going to work well together because they have that light gray, that little bit of distress, and now I have my direction where I can go with that blue color that I wanted to add. So I can look for things that are teal, light blue, and yellow, and then I can have a group, a, a group of papers that will work really well. The Follow Your Heart comes in kind of two colorways, one that has more pink in it and one that has more teal. And um, the pink pink version is called Be Happy and the turquoisey bit is called Be Amazing I believe. Um, I'll double check as we go. But you'll see there are lots of different patterns and this is a, um, a transparency sheet that has six 4x6 four six photo frames. So great for 12x12 12 12 pages but also great for embellishing 4x6 pockets if you're using divided page protectors. And you can have a look at the patterns. So there's a lot of lovely, usable, repeating patterns that aren't overly themed. And then what I want to show you is that each side is acts a little differently. So for example, this one, which could be used whole or cut up because it has all these great vintage Polaroid frames, also has this embellished area. So I could use this and use it as a background and, and build around this embellishment or I could cut all these pieces apart and the back side is something that's really versatile as either a full sheet or cut up. So if I do want to cut this piece out and then I'm left with all of this, I then can either look at individual frames or I have all of this. So there's going to be no waste even if I cut this design up. Here's just a little bit more look at that idea. So things that have a lovely pattern in some element of the page. But if I turn these three over, I have pieces that will work either as full sheets or cut into pieces. So whether I want to build on top of this or cut this out and use it on another page, either way I'm going to be fine with the whole with a way to use the whole sheet. And it matches quite well with some of the other things that have just come out from my mind's eyes. So this one is the On the Bright Side collection, but also has that teal turquoise look. And this is from the Miss Caroline collection, which also has gray and white, but teal and turquoise. So things I'm going to pull out here, I'm going to keep this sheet from On the Bright Side, and this um, teal stripe, which also has that gray polka dot. And then I'm going to pick one from the Be Amazing collection. That's this one. And it looks like this on the background, so I could use part of that as well. And I really like this um, little piece. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that bit of wording, but I liked both sides of this one, and it's the right colors, and it coordinates with that background. So I'm going to go ahead and make my decision that this is what I'm going to use. If I need to come back and add some more into that, that's completely fine. But I think that if you're really having trouble trying to make that decision, there comes a moment where you need to go, okay, I have a few things on the table, stop here and get started with your layout. Once I have an idea of a few papers and something that's going to tie it all together, then I then need to go and start looking for things like lettering and places for writing and all those little bits and pieces that I know will go into my finished layout. And I'm still not putting the photo in the mix. I'm looking at what I have and then I'll take different pieces and hold it up next to it to see what works. And sometimes you'll be surprised at how much leeway there is. See how there are various different shades of the teal and the turquoise here, but yet they all 
look quite um, harmonious together. Well, if I go to my letter stickers and were to go for teal letters, I actually came up with two options straight away. And this alphabet or this alphabet could both work even though they're very different shades of teal because this one just happens to be the brighter edge of that spectrum and this is a more muted color. By the way, I did want to show you these because I had missed these in the store for a while until someone pointed them out and I think they're fabulous. They are, um, if you love letter stickers anyway, they'll be fabulous. <laughs> these are from Prima and they come in all sorts of different color combinations. There must be about a dozen in the store now. And they're just collections of four different small alphabets. And they, in the store they look like a 12 by 12 sheet. So when you're looking through the icons, they look like that. But you can store them either as the full 12 by 12 or they are creased so that you can store them with your 6 by 12 stickers. So depending on how you, how you prefer to store things, they're really useful that way. But there's all different colors. These are a bit more muted, but there are some that are very bright and just really nice sizes and fonts that you'll be able to use. They aren't overly themed in any, they're not themed in any way. So you'll be able to use them on all sorts of different pages and just something that I hadn't noticed until it was pointed out to me and now I'm quite in love with the idea so I may have ordered them in every color. Anyway, moving on. So, um, there, the either the dar the darker, brighter teal or this more muted color could work. At the moment, I'm thinking that there's quite a lot of washed out color here, so I'm going to go with this bright one. But I'm going to keep this kind of on deck in case it turns out to be useful. Another thing is that you can also sometimes get really close colors in terms of whites and grays. So I wanted to show you these side by side because they kind of fooled me. In the new Dear Lizzie thickers, there is, these are the matte puffy stickers. There's one called, I think it's called Charcoal. Um, let's see if it's on here. No. Okay, um, I'm pretty sure it's called Charcoal or some other word that means gray. And then there's a white. And when I look at just this one on its own, I'm quite happy to call that white. But this is the white. So the white is very, very bright white, while the charcoal is a very pale gray. So um, just in case that's useful to you, if you really want bright white or it's not a dark gray, it's very much a, a pale, just barely there gray. So I would like this with this combination, and I think this white is perhaps a little bit too bright. I, th I think it would certainly work, but if I have both on hand, I'm going to pick that one. And then looking to some embellishments, I just went looking for things where this teal or yellow kind of jumped out at me. So I have this sticker, which has the teal and the yellow right there. That's from the Miss Caroline, My Mind's Eye. And I pulled out these also from that same collection, which also have some peach, but if I kind of delete that from my mind, I can see the turquoise and the yellow here. These from the Follow Your Heart collection, and this is from the pink side of that range, but there's still a lot of turquoise in here. And let's see what else. Ah, these from Ellie Studio, which include some journaling tags, and these are now available at two piece, so um, that's an extra bonus. And I really like this size. This pack, I'll open this up so you can see. There's all different sizes in this pack. So there's some squares, some rectangles, some are kind of thinner rectangles than others. So I was thinking I might use this one because it's got that shot of turquoise in it. That pack is called the Handmade Layers Journaling Tags. You get eight in the pack. And this is just one that I really like. I like small little die cuts that that can go in for detail. And she does these in all different kind of color combinations and and styles, but they're just really small, narrow pieces so that you don't need a lot of room on the layout. You can just tuck them in and they just automatically create a lovely little layer. They're called date and place strips and they come in different colors and things. So I was going to pull one out that maybe had some yellow on it and I'm not quite sure which one. I think I'll go with this one. I might keep that one in mind if I want to go So back. now I have quite a bit ready to go in this gray, teal, and yellow color combination. Um, I pulled out a couple other things that don't involve color, just things to finish the page. So I've picked up the stamp set from the um, Follow Your Heart collection. 
Um, it has some really nice, lovely large stamps, but I also love that it has these little words that can just go in in little pieces and layers, and some tiny little um, hearts and butterflies and things like that. There's a few different sets, so you can have a look and see which motifs are more your style. So this is a background stamp from, uh, it's designed by Basic Gray, made by Hero Arts. And it's from the Oxford collection, which was their back to school collection, and it looks like notebook paper. It's in this in the store at the moment, but there aren't very many left, so it's on sale. And if you want to make your own journaling cards in any size, if you tend to do a lot of writing and wish you had lines to write on, this is the perfect stamp for you. So even if you just like notebook themed things, then it's it's great for you too. But it's really, really useful if you want to make your own journaling cards and things like that. So um, I would definitely grab one of those before they're gone if that's something to your liking. So I've pulled that out for my journaling and then something that's not um, on sale, something that's brand new. But I just really love this as a new basic element. This is from American Crafts and it came with the Gardenia collection but it's not themed in any way. They're just plain wooden buttons in several different, well I think maybe two different sizes in the pack. Um, but you get 24 buttons in the pack and you could leave them plain or you can paint the centers or you can paint the outsides so they're just something that can be worked with any real co any collection you want really um, so something I would have a look at if you tend to like buttons and want to add something to your collection so now I have plenty of things on the table I'll set these aside because I'm not really planning to use them and now is when I would go back to the photos so now I have these two photos that I'm going to use. I know that the colors are not exact and I know I haven't picked up on all that green in the picture, but what I hope to do is that everything will have a nice um, overall mood that will go with the photos and the story I want to tell. And so now I'm going to start putting the layout together. And now I'm going to start with this sheet, the crepe paper design that I picked first as my background. And then the next thing I want to do is go ahead and map my photos so I can start that layer. What I'm going to do is I know I'm going to use this piece, but I'm going to use it cut out. So I know that I can use the rest of both sides of, these, of this paper in other ways. So I'm just going to adhere the two 4x6 photos right next to each other on the same layer. And this is very similar to last week's adventure that I also used two 4 by 6 photos that time. It's my favorite um, favorite set or favorite format for a 12 by 12 page because it means that there's a perfect balance of how much of the page space is devoted to the pictures and how much room there is for everything else. So I always find that with two 4 by 6 photos, I get that benefit of having two pictures that are quite big and, and clear to see, but also I have plenty of room for wording, I have plenty of room for embellishment, and that just works really well for me. I also find, you'll notice through all of my layouts, I almost always use the pictures in the same orientation. I very rarely do one portrait and one landscape or, or mixing it up. Occasionally if I do a double page I have less trouble with that idea, but in general I just really like keeping them in the same orientation so that there's no confusion to the eye. Right. The next thing I want to do is make another layer that will go underneath this, but it's going to be off-centered. So I just want to get an idea of what kind of size I want to trim this to. So I'm just going to mark my cutting points. So I'm going to cut one more layer here. So I'm going to do exactly the same. I'll go ahead and start to add the adhesive to this. And when I do layered stacks like this, I just put the adhesive in the middle, not the four corners, so that then when I layer things up, I'll be able to come back and put other pieces here without having to tear the layout apart. And so then if there's anything that that seems to be too, um, just a bit too detached, like it's going to perhaps fall apart and I don't want that to happen, then at the end I can just go back and tuck adhesive underneath those corners. So I'm starting now with this as the first large page element, which is a stack of um, papers all in that same color. So the next thing I want to do is start to introduce that yellow tone. I'm going to start with the two stickers on this sheet and I think this tab as well. 
Now tabs like this, if they're going to go off the page, then the idea is that you fold them in half and they would go at the top of the page so that you never see the back. But I'm going to put it on the page itself, so I might as well cut it in half and keep the other one for later because then I can use that same idea. And I will add um, black to all the edges of the stickers too, just to keep those white edges from showing. And when I'm working in layers with stickers like this, I'm just going to place it ever so lightly so that in case I want to come back and change that, I can. Now, with the doilies, I don't want to use, well, I want to use the whole doily, but part of it's going to be underneath another layer. So I might as well save that part and use it later. So what I tend to do is cut not in half, but uneven pieces so that I have maybe two thirds and one third. And I want a splash of yellow in this corner. So I'm thinking I could put that underneath this layer. And then what I do is I just look for those straight edges and make sure that I'm placing it so that it looks as though the whole piece is there. And I'm just going to check and see if I like it better behind this layer. Actually, I do. So I'll place that as well. Now, I haven't adhered this to the background, so I'm just working on this piece as a whole at the moment. And then I have this large one. I'm going to do the same thing with that. Cut it into two pieces. So now I've just cut the whole sticker sheet. And I'm thinking maybe I just need this small piece on here. Yeah, but I will need to attach that right to the background. So time for me to make a decision and go ahead and start sticking things to the background paper. I put the date and place tag up in this cluster and then that means that I'm kind of planning to put these three pieces down this angle so that the embellishments will go across so the photos are right in the middle. And I also wanted to make sure I went back and cut out this piece that I wanted to use so I'm just going to cut that out with my scissors. To make the journaling lines, I want to use this big stamp. You can use this with a block, but I also find it can be quite useful to just use it on the table and then put the paper over the top. So I'm just going to ink it with black ink and then I'm going to try the lines over the polka dots. So I'll just line that up and then I use a brayer over the top so that I can use one hand to hold things in place and the other to roll. And I have my lines ready to go. The back of the paper that had the honeycomb and then the bit that I cut out with the different tapes layered up has this turquoise and white stripe. So I thought that was worth putting in a little bit as well, but I didn't want to add any more big layers of paper. So I've just cut a few strips and I'm going to put a notebook paper edge on that with this punch from American Crafts. This is from their knockouts system, so the punches come out um, and then you don't need as much storage space as a normal punch system because you just add the cartridges. Now I have plenty of these pieces um, ready to go so I can just start layering them up and finding the best way to fit them all on my page. I've added in my writing and now I want to add in my title before I go back and add my last final embellishments. So I'm going to mix two alphabets, the um, smaller tiled alphabet that will be flat and then the thickers which will give a bit more dimension and also the two alphabets will contrast in both the color and the style of the writing where you've got something that looks more typewriter versus something that looks a bit handwritten. When I started adding the papers to different areas of the page, I was careful to repeat them so that there would be something that naturally lets your eye move around the page. But now that I have most things in place, I'm also looking at the color and noticing that I have this yellow splash up here and yellow represented down here, but it then leaves me kind of wishing that there was a bit of yellow up here that would also make that orange tie in a bit better. So what I want to do is then add something else to that. And I'm going to go back to that 
very first thing that I looked at for the color combination, which was this chipboard sheet, and I just looked straight to a few elements that were very yellow and just punched them out with the backing attached so that I can move them around on the page and see what would work. So I had in mind that this perhaps might work up here, and it does, but it doesn't. I think this one is a bit better in scale, so the smaller piece keeps the the attention on the larger word. And just grab my acrylic block and my ink. And I have just a bit of uh, paper that I didn't end up using so I can stamp as a test because that's a new stamp set. Just make sure I'm happy with happy with how the happy stamps. <laughs> That'll work just fine. So then I'll just come back in and stamp a few words here and there. The last little detail is the buttons and I added some yellow baker's twine to fill the holes in the buttons. That's um, this one from My Mind's Eye in the Miss Caroline collection. And then just added a little bit more of that underneath the title, ran it underneath the descending letter there. And now I think I definitely am done. There's enough um, dimension from the buttons. There's yellow in um, three different areas of the page. And I don't really think there's any room for me to add any more at this point, so I think I'll definitely call it done. But definitely pattern papers that I stuck with from the beginning didn't change my mind along the way even though I could have decided I needed another yellow paper or something just going with what I pulled out at the beginning and trying not to deviate from that too much and using that same paper in different places around the page to make it stick essentially to make it have a purpose and look right so even though I didn't take the green and brown color scheme that would go with outdoors that idea of taking a color scheme that even just has a notion from the photos and working from there in the end will all come together. So don't panic about um, colors that are not particularly exact. Give it a try with some other shades and use different darks and lights and in-betweens of that shade and eventually it should get a little easier and a whole lot less stressful. Thanks for watching this week and I'll see you next time with a new adventure. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.